Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good. All right, welcome to Wellness Management and Recovery. Um, today we're going to talk about wellness. Um, I just gave you a sheet, and we're going to talk about what wellness is. We're going to cover uh, the different areas of wellness, and we're going to discuss. Okay? I didn't get one of those sheets. I got the packet. No, I got the Here. Here, I got plenty. There you go. You get that box. Okay. Learning goal. Explore personal meaning of wellness. Two, we're going to, through reflection on factors that contribute to a healthier lifestyle, i.e., we're going to talk about nutrition, exercise, sleep, spirituality, etc., begin to value a personal wellness identity. We're also going to learn that one can build their life through informed choices and goal setting. And four, with the development of wellness plan, learn how to balance contributes to recovery. Okay? Session takeaway. Each participant identifies new ways to achieve balance and wellness in their lives, develop and set new goals towards balancing health and wellness. Okay, um, let's go to page, let me take you to page, page six. Okay, we don't have an overhead projector, but that's fine because we have the visual right in front of us. Okay, um, I'd like to first welcome all you members. It tells me to welcome each member and any supports. So I'd like to say welcome, first of all. We're going to review skills from previous week, updates to individual wellness wheel, which we didn't do. Review individual goals and process, share other significant events since last session, and review how the previous session related to wellness and recovery. Okay, who was here last week? Everybody was here last week? Who had a copy of what I gave out last week? Give that to Miss CC. Thank you. Okay, and, and three down here. No, I have a copy of what you gave out. You have a copy of that? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Bob and Larry, take one. Okay. Um, last week, we kind of went over the orientation of what to expect. Okay. I want to start off by saying uh, session one was setting SMART goals. And let me show you what the acronym for SMART is. If you turn to, on the handout, um, Turn to page, the fourth page. SMART, specific, measurable, obtainable, realistic, and timely. When we make goals, we're going to make goals based on this uh, specific acronym. We're going to make our goals uh, according to the SMART chart, is what SMART goals is what we call it. Okay? The goal has to be specific. Remember when I told you about making a goal of, say, losing weight? That's not specific enough. We have to also add in some of the ways we're going to lose weight, uh, what amount of weight we're going to lose, what time period we're going to lose that weight in. And it, it has to be something that's attainable and something measurable. You're not going to lose 20 pounds in one month. That's not obtainable. That's not realistic. Goals we make need to be realistic goals. So, that's what we're going to make today. Now, last week, I gave you a homework assignment of coming up with a weekly goal. So, we just spoke about our SMART acronym. Okay, lesson one, we explored personal meaning of wellness and recover. Two, we understood that recovery is possible for everyone. 
Begin to look at oneself as a whole person through the development of wellness will, and then go engage in goal setting processes through the use of wellness of the wellness will. Okay? We um talked about that. Some of the things we talked about was insight. What does insight mean? Insight means or having awareness that one has a mental illness. Rebuilding a sense of self. A journey towards stable self that means having a stronger sense of who you really are. Empowerment. Having a sense of personal control and being willing to take risk. By this we mean being willing to change or take risks that are good for us, not dangerous ones. Develop of coping mechanism. Illness management. This means we learn skills or sometimes just helpful little tricks that helps when we're having trouble so that we can better manage our illness. And last but definitely not least, having social support. By, by this we mean people that understand and care about us. People we feel we can trust. Okay? All these things are necessary when it comes to wellness. Okay? So, we spoke a little bit about what wellness is, uh, what wellness means to us. So, this week we're going to talk about wellness again, but this week we're going to add nutritional. We're going to add in what the effects of drugs are on our wellness. How does drugs affect our wellness. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to ask questions. And we're going to come to some conclusions. But first of all, we're going to work on our last week goal. Who remember what that last week goal was? Larry. I did, um, like, walk. I, I think it's like walking like, like a half a mile or something. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did a little bit more than that. Okay, how many days did you do that? I did it probably like in, like, Instead of like going to the bus all the time, yeah. going to the next bus stop, I think it's like probably these two to three days. Oh, very good. Okay. That was the goal, and you met that goal. Small goals are what we're here for. All right. I ain't going to call you Tony. I'm going to call you John. I like calling you Tony, but I'm going to call you John because that's your name. Thank you. All right, John. What was your one-week goal, and did you accomplish it? Yes, I did. Okay, tell me what that goal was. Uh, my goal is to be on a better sleep schedule. Okay, and looking at your Fitbit, you got a, a lot more sleep. Yep. Very good, very good. How do you feel? How does it make you feel when you get the right amount of sleep? I'm not used to that yet. Okay, you'll, you'll come to a conclusion on yeah, how it betters that. your life. Yeah, and I want you to share that with us. I want you to share once you get a, a working knowledge of getting the right proper amount of sleep. I want you to share with us, because that's a goal you set for yourself. Okay. Now we're going to find out what the pros and cons of that goal is. Okay? okay. So be ready to answer that in a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay? Paulo, after you finish yawning, what were your one-week goal last week? I think it was um, meet three new people. Okay. And what was the final outcome? I think I met Joe. Okay. James, I think. James? Bless you, Larry. Alexa. Alexa! So you met three people. Yeah. Okay. How did it make you feel? Good. Good? I see you smiling more. Yeah. I see you're talking to people more. You're coming a lot more social. And that's what we're looking for. And we're looking at for, from you. Um, that is your specific task and your specific goals that I want you to really grasp in the next 10 weeks. I want to follow to now start making friends outside of the recovery center, but we'll, we'll gradually work our way into that. But um, I want Apollo to be able to go anywhere and say, hey, I'm Apollo, how are you? I want you to be able to go out and, and tell the world who you are. Make new friends. I want that to be a part of your everyday life now. All right, Bob, what was your weekly goal and did you accomplish it? I think it was either a daily goal or a weekly goal, but I would do my book of Catholic prayers. Okay. I did do that, 
about one week before last night, I went to Sacrament of Reconciliation to have sins forgiven. Okay. And the following night, which was one week before night, and Thursday night, I watched Mass on television. Okay, but what was your weekly goal? Okay, I think it was a daily goal. The daily. Uh, I, I asked you for a weekly goal as uh, well. Uh, I don't think I did that either. I think it was not to procrastinate on it. Okay. In my apartment. And I have done you haven't done it? So you didn't meet your goal for last week? No, I don't think so. Okay, what are we going to do about that? Try to do it more often. <laughs> okay, all right. Miss Cece, mm -hmm. you had a weekly goal. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that weekly goal was and tell me, did you accomplish it? I didn't accomplish it. You didn't! Okay, let's talk about it. My goal was to get uh, more rest, but I haven't even been to sleep since last night. Are you having trouble sleeping? Um. I don't, it's, something's going on. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Okay. So, um, what do we do about that? Do we talk to our doctor? Uh, do we talk to our psychiatric professional? Uh, maybe there's a medication. Uh, maybe there's some therapy you can take. Mm -hmm. But when we don't sleep correctly, there is something going on. Mm -hmm. And again, in personal wellness, you need to know exactly what's going on with your body, uh, with your sleep, with how you eat, uh, exercise. These are things we need to be concerned with when it comes to wellness. And if one of those things are off, we need to find out why it's off. And we need to talk to someone and find the methods in order for us to correct that. Okay? Well, I have an appointment on the 31st. Okay. Primary. All right. Good. Very good. Now, do we have a list of the things we're going to talk about? Do we know the questions that we're going to ask? Oh, yeah. Okay. I want everybody, before they go to a doctor appointment, sit down. Ask questions. Write questions down that you want to know. Ask your doctor as many questions as you ask at the recovery center. You need to know these things. Knowing who we are part of our wellness. And that has to be satisfied. Okay, Prince. Um, I believe mine was sweet too. But, okay. Uh, I hit it on and off like uh, like last night I went to bed too late. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, one thing I have a habit of doing sometimes at night I get on the computer and then that cause me to go to bed later because I lose time. Right. I don't keep up with the time when I'm on there so I did that last night, so I know uh, for me to turn in earlier if like okay. I want to. I've um, um, got to either get on the computer earlier or, or don't get on it at all if it's later. So there's not a problem sleeping. It's just other things keep you from sleeping, yeah. make other activities keep you from sleeping. Okay, so what are we going to do about that? Well, are we going to come off the computer at uh, yeah. 10 o'clock? Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to do it earlier or either just skip Let's it. set a goal for that. Let's say specifically what that goal is going to be. Uh, just getting off earlier. Earlier can be 1.15 as compared to 2 o'clock the night before. So let's make that a goal based on a time, uh, how much time you're going to spend on the computer, and when you're going to log off the computer. I think uh, what it is with me, when I get on there, I might pick something that I'm really into and I lose track of time. Uh, like, for instance, I was watching, I'm still a fan anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I was watching Bruce Lee and I got carried away on there watching. <laughs> Bruce uh, Lee! Yeah, Who was, doesn't love Bruce <laughs> Lee? Everybody loves Bruce Lee. I got carried away, I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But there is no problem sleeping. We just have to make goals based on you getting to sleep. So, that's what I want everybody to do. I want everybody to make, write these plans down. I want you to have these plans available for you. This is the steps that we're going to take in order to improve our lives. So, can't do that by just saying, okay, I'm going to... Get off the computer early. That's not really a lot to go on. We need 
to specifically part of what SMART stands for. We need to specifically make goals and put things to them that, that we understand. Um, again, you're not going to do something unrealistic. You're going to do something that's within range. We're going to do things that we can achieve. We can achieve cleaning our, our place. We can achieve that. We have to be motivated to do it. Okay? If we don't do it, we need to find out why we're not doing it. That's how we set goals. That's how we set goals. We find out what's standing in our way of keeping us from accomplishing our task and our mission. So we need to know that as well. Not only do we know the, need to know the mission, we need to know the obstacles that, that stand in our way. And we need to find a way to be able to maneuver around those obstacles. Okay, motivation is, I think, the biggest factor, um, being motivated. Who's in here motivated? Motivated. Not motivated. On some things, yes. Okay. And other things, no. What do we do when we're not motivated, when we're unmotivated? What are some of the things we can do? Bob, hold on. What are some of the things we can do when we're unmotivated? What do you do when you're unmotivated, Larry? Probably just uh, give it the thought of giving consideration of what it really is. Okay, very good. John, what do you do when you're unmotivated? I listen to music. Me too. Me too. That motivates me. Oh. That's a very good. Very good. I'm coming to you, Miss Cece. No, no, I just thought of something. Okay. Paul, hmm. what do you do when you're unmotivated? Find some quotes that are inspirational. Okay, positive affirmations? Yeah. Okay, very good. Bob, what do you do when you're unmotivated? Listen to old rock music. Rock music! And it puts you in the right mood and spirit. Of the late 50s, early 60s. All right. I also watch the Reds play baseball on television. All right, very good. Miss uh, CC. I was saying before, about to say before, if you don't feel like cleaning your apartment, get started on it, take breaks. Yeah. While you're doing it. If okay. You take breaks, maybe that might make it a little easier to get all that clean. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. Miss Cece, you were going to say something. You no, just, just thought of something. When he said, um, I think John was talking about listen to music, mm -hmm. this is going to sound really, really out in space, but I have two televisions, a radio, and a computer system. Mm -hmm that had been in the boxes forever and ever and ever. And I think I don't have any stimulation to my environment. When he said that, that sort of put a light bulb on in my head. Okay. Now, next question, why do I have that stuff sitting around? Yes, why? <laughs> yes, why, Miss Cece? It's, it's different. I don't know why. You need somebody to come help set it up? I've had people offer. Okay. I just, I don't know. It's one of those. Got an expert right there. Looking right at you. Hi there, expert. Okay. It's, it's just one of those, I don't know why. Okay. I mean, that computer, that okay. computer has been there for two years. No, oh, Miss Cece. Two years? The television has been there for over a year. Okay. That's one of them. Okay. The other television has been there. I just bought that a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Is it a smart TV? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because one thing that concerns me about the computer is technology changes so much. Right. Um, is the computer, of course, if it's only two years old, it, it should still be compatible to the processes that we have now. But if my computer is 10 years old. Um, I just hate to get rid of it, and I would hate to buy another one. Mm -hmm. But it's slow. It's not compatible with anything, but I still keep it. So. All right, so we're going to get those things out of boxes, we're going to make that a goal, we're going to get them set up, and we're going to start using them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's okay. funny. <laughs> okay, whatever you say. All right, we'll work on that. I'll put forth the effort. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll get it together. Prince. Uh, music has been another thing that motivates the heck out of me. Uh -huh. I, I like music and uh, what kind of music? different types. I like rock and roll, I mm -hmm. like jazz, I yeah. like blues, I okay. like reggae, I like classical music. And what does music do for you? Uh, it seems like it stimulates me some kind of okay. way. 
Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. I feel good when I hear it. I'm yeah. ready to do whatever now. Before maybe I didn't feel like doing something, and then when I put that on, oh, I, I'm ready to get with it. Okay. Very good. All right. For me, it's music as well. Specifically, gospel music. I have about four or five gospel songs that I listen to that just really, really breaks up the monotony that I'm feeling. Uh, my favorite is Kelly Price uh, for Every Mountain. And it is what motivates me. So, music is my saving grace as well. I also do methods uh, known as the box of breathing that I showed you. Uh, and again, we talked about meditation tips, didn't we? We talked about by the end of this 10 weeks, you're going to have a meditation tip for me. You're going to do a meditation tip. And we're all going to try it. And we're going to see if it works for us. Okay? So... We're going to try this. Okay, Bob. I have something rather <laughs> funny to say, but uh, my parents said they didn't care that much for Elvis Presley or his music, but I like to listen to his music. <laughs> okay, good. John. Can I suggest something for you since you mentioned meditation? Yes. Have you ever heard of an app called Insight Timer? No. It's a meditation app. Okay, how about you sit down and put some words to this. Give us a small presentation in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to use that as a meditation tip. Okay. So that will be your meditation tip, is to compile information that we may need, the app, uh, the information that includes. It's free. Now. Okay, that, that's good. We need to know that. Okay. So let that be your goal for finding out that meditation tip. Okay. Okay, Paula. Yeah. All right. What was I just asking? Were you paying attention? Huh? Were you paying attention to Paula? Uh, I sort of was. Okay. All right. What was, tell him what the question was. Okay. Um, I was suggesting something for Ernest because he talks about meditation. Already. Right. And there's an app if people have a smartphone. Ah, uh, no. We, we got through that. All right. They so, you had a question. What causes to become on people to become more unmotivated to do things and feel tired all the time is changes of the seasons of the year. Oh, absolutely. We're going into the cold months now, and I think that has an effect that the sun is setting at a shorter time and the days are getting shorter. Absolutely. But the weather is colder outside. So. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Now, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to start off with I want to say we're going to start out with physical wellness. Let's talk about physical wellness. There are many benefits of physical activity. Physical activity helps keep weight under control, healthy function of heart and lung, prevent bone loss, contribute to elevated mood, increase energy during the day, improve sleep at night. What page are we on? Twelve. Um, Contribute to elevated mood, increase uh, during the day. Regular, regulate appetite, improve memory and all functions of the brain, improve self-esteem. Uh, support improvement in medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure. Uh, if it looks, if you look good, you feel good. You will feel better about your whole person with. Just your physical wellness. How many of us in here use physical wellness? I exercise. I do a lot of exercising. Tennis is my main exercise. And I know y'all heard this a million times about me playing tennis. But it's my physical wellness. And when I do tennis, I seem to keep my body better. I sleep better. My mood is a lot better when I'm exercising because the endorphins pump through your body. Um, uh, it also improves your sex drive. It also improves areas in your life that we want to improve in. That's an area that I don't mind improving in. It's my sex life. 
Okay, I'm just being honest. Uh, improve your brain function. It allows you to think clearer. Um, make better decisions. So, we need to incorporate physical activities into our life. How many of the days a week do we include physical activities? And what are those physical activities? Larry. Physical activities, you do at least about like three days a week. Okay, you do three days a week. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like walking. Or right. Or doing little, little small ways. Okay, absolutely. All right, what about you, John? Me? Yes. I try to do Tai Chi every Tuesday. Okay, Tai Chi. That's a good exercise. It's very relaxing. It's very relaxing and it's strengthening. And it, and it helps get the heart rate up, brings it down. So it, it has all the benefits of great exercise. Apollo, what do you do? I usually go to the gym. Okay. Every other day. Are you weightlifting? Are you running? Are you a cardio man? Are you a weightlifting man? Or you just go to pick up chicks? What do you do, Paolo? <laughs> I do the pulling machines. Okay. And then I run. Okay. So you do a combination of everything. Yeah. All right. And pick up chicks. I, I try. Ah! <laughs> all right, Paolo. <laughs> Bob, what do you do? And how many days a week do you do it? Uh, on Monday through Thursday, I can do physical exercise by walking. Okay. I can do shopping, going to restaurants. Okay. Love street and where I live. But my part time job is being a dishwasher. Right. At a restaurant, there's a certain, there's pretty much physical activity. All right. And doing a part time dishwasher. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. What about you, Miss CC? About three days a week. What do you do in three days a week? Um, I go to Bailey Place. Okay. And uh, water aerobics. The water aerobics is fun. And um, it's very good for you. And Low they, impact. They also have an indoor track, so I walk. Okay. All right. What about you, Prince? Uh, right now, I'm just I'm just doing some walking, like okay. three days a week. But All right. I, I want to do other exercises. It's just that. Uh, my health to me is not standard enough for me to do some of the other exercise. I'm okay. Doing, uh, when I get that straightened out, then I'll probably be doing a lot of stuff because uh, what I want to get, this is what I've been wanting to get for a while. You know that uh, that commercial that Chuck Norris mm -hmm. was about that machine? Yeah, the machine. Yeah, I've been wanting to get one of them because I know it's all types of exercise that right. you can do on there. Right. And it uh, definitely keeps you in shape. Yeah, it does. That's what it's doing for him and everybody else that's got one. Right. So I, I look forward to getting one of them. I've seen, uh, I've seen some of them at a store up on Cold Rain. It's like mm -hmm. a store where they sell uh, exercise stuff. They sell, they sell a little bit of everything in there. Okay. And uh, I like to get one of them out of there because you can get one out of there cheaper okay. than what it would be if you try to buy one from him. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's go now to, now that we've talked about physical wellness, let's talk about nutritional wellness. Okay. Eating habits are contributed to our wellness in a number of different ways. Some of the benefits of good, good nutrition is help body perform at its best, provides energy, improve the way the medication works, and improves your mood, improves your sleep pattern, improves your sex drive and performance, provide vitamins and minerals as needed, help control diabetes and high blood pressure, improve weight balance, improves brain function, and contributes to self-esteem. Okay, out of all those benefits, which of those benefits apply to you? I'll tell you, again, the benefits for me of good nutrition is I maintain a good weight. Uh, I try to eat very healthy, um, and I try to incorporate all the nutrition Nutri nutrients that I need uh, daily, I try to get those nutrients in my body. Uh, it does provide the energy that I need to stay out on the tennis court three, four hours. Uh, it does provide me with uh, a clear and pleasant mood. 
My mood is, is very well after I exercise and I've had a great meal. Uh, it puts me in a great mood. So, what are some of the benefits that good nutrition do for you, Larry? It improves the weight balance. All right, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's your goal, is working on your weight balance. Okay? They're very good. John? It improves the way the medication works for me. Okay. How? Um, I don't know how it does it, but I'm taking a, I go to GCV every uh -huh. month, and I get an injection. Okay. And eating correctly uh, aids in the energy that you get. Yep. Uh, balance out the mood that you, the stress and anxiety that you feel. Okay. All right. Very good. Paulo. You've been listening, Paulo. Yeah. All right. Come on. Tell me what you got, Paulo. What does <laughs> nutrition do for you? It gives me more energy. Mm hmm. Energy to do what? Outside, walk, okay. Read a book. Read a book. All right. It helps you focus. It helps you mentally. Yeah. Um, it does. Nutrition uh, does a lot of things for the body. Bob, what is it that you do? Um, what does nutrition, good nutrition, do benefit you? How does it benefit you? Add more fruits and vegetables in my diet. Okay. Now, what does that do for you? When you some do fruits, add some fruits that have like high C flavor okay. and other minerals that could be good for your body. Okay. And that could be cause you to be more self motivated mm -hmm. because you're having just other food than cheese or meat or eggs or something. Absolutely. All right, Miss Cece, mm -hmm. what about you? Well, Helps to control other um, health problems, physical nope. health Absolutely. problems. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, diabetes, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my knees, when I lost weight, all those things are a thing of the past. When you lose the weight, the diabetes, uh, the A1C level becomes normal. The high blood pressure starts to go away. Uh, all kind of ailments leave the body when you're in a good physical condition and when you put that extra mile in a uh, whole lot of ailments will disappear okay what about you Frank? Um, I'm always changing my, my uh, diet anyway mm -hmm. uh, now I mean for a long time and even now I still don't eat meat at all I don't eat meat either yeah. very good so uh, I figure that's one part of it, but the other part is different. Other things like uh, too much sweets. Yes. So I cut back on that. I still yes. eat it, but I cut way back. Absolutely. On it. Absolutely. You know, uh, just, just try to eat uh, the right things that's going to help your uh, help your health to get better. Because I know I got high blood pressure anyway. So yeah. I cut. Uh, I really don't use salt at all. Okay. Uh, I got this stuff. that's called. Uh, it's actually called no salt. No salt. Yeah. I don't have any sodium in it. Okay. Uh, different other things. That's why I said my diet is always changing. I'm always looking to better it from what it already is. Absolutely. Very good. All right. Very good. Mental wellness. Okay. Keeping the brain fit contributes to wellness in a number of different ways. Mental fit fitness includes reflection. Positive self-talk, peace and calm, humor, laughter, and fun, taking medication, participating in treatment, hobbies and activities, good conversation, medication, self-care, and journaling. Mental fitness helps benefit mental wellness in the following ways. It relieves stress, it promotes self-reflection, promotes empowerment, and improves brain function. Okay, I think that's important for everybody. I think that's probably one of the most important of them all. Uh, we're in recovery, and our mental health is, should be our number one concern. Okay, brain function, um, keeping the brain focused. Um, not being stuck on one thing like depression and anxiety. How to relieve these 
stressors. Um, we need to learn how to take our medication on time. We have to participate in treatment. We need to ask questions with our doctor. We need to know questions. We need to know what's going on with us mentally and physically. So I ask you, what do you ask your doctor when you talk to him? What, what is it that concerns you about your mental illness? These are the questions we need to ask our doctors. These are questions that we need to sit down and think about before we go to an appointment. I want you to sit down and write out these things. It's hard to remember things once you get in front of somebody. Uh, the presentation that I had planned for the day just kind of went out the window as soon as I, the camera came on. So it's best when we write things down and we make a, a list of the things that we need to know. And we ask our doctors. That's called participating in your wellness. That's called advocating for yourself. Do we advocate for ourselves? Or do we just accept what the doctor tells us? Okay, take this medicine and come back in three weeks and tell me. No. No. That's the old way. That's the old way. The new way. Here. Unless you advocate for yourself, that's exactly what you're going to get. Who advocates for themselves? I do. I do. That's, that's the most important part of recovery, is advocating for yourself. Have to have a direction. Have to know exactly what it is you want to know. I want to know what it is I want to know. I want to know exactly how my depression affects me, how my anxiety affects me, what my triggers are. Um, things that I need to do to avoid these things. I need to know these things. We need to be aware of any and everything that pertains to our disability. Um, we don't need guess. We don't need to be told something that we don't believe. We need, the doctor works for you. You don't work for the doctor. Um, let him know that. Let him know that I'm here for a specific reason. And these reasons need to be explained to me. So let your doctor earn his key. Okay? Make him give you answers that you need. There is no dumb question. Even the smallest of questions that you need to know. Um, you need to ask. Doctor won't know unless you ask him. So be a little bit more concerned about your mental illness. Be a little bit more advocate about the questions you ask. You want to know. Things you want to know. Ask the questions. You're not going to get an answer unless you ask the question. So, all right, mental wellness. Spiritual wellness, all right. Spiritual wellness includes self-assessment, personal reflection, guided imagery, prayer, meditation, self-love, goal setting, participation in faith communities, fellowship, community involvement, natural and alternative therapies, the arts, recreation of self. Spirituality can support wellness in the following ways. A reliance on higher power, generate zest and enthusiasm, support peace and calm, decrease stress, healing, provide guidance and purpose, uh, foster altruism, a desire to help others, and provide an outlet. Okay, how important is your spiritual wellness to you? How important is your spiritual wellness? Pretty important. Okay, you have a higher power? Yes, I do. You pray? Okay, do you have faith? Yes. All right. Those are some of the things that we need. And those are some of the things that we look for when we look at our spiritual wellness. We want to know um, self-love. Some people say, I have a little bit too much self-love. <laughs> some people say, I love myself too much. And they, might be, <laughs> they might be right. But I do. I have a lot of self-love. Uh, it, it's taken me a long time to get to this point, but I absolutely love who Ernest is. I think uh, uh, 
Yes. I think when you when you have that, then that, that also make you have it for other people. Absolutely. Well. Absolutely. You can't love others unless you love yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's hard uh, to give love that you don't even have within yourself. Yeah. It's kind of hard to have a type of relationship that's beneficial to you if you don't love yourself. You're not going to have beneficial relationships. Uh, your love relationships will suffer. Okay, John. I have a question. Okay, let's let's get to this and then you can ask the question. To what you were telling me. Okay, you. yeah. Well, what if you don't have, what if you don't believe in a higher power or if you don't have faith in Why not? Why don't you? Do you? No. You don't? No. Is that your choice? Yes, it is. It's a choice. We can't push a choice on you. That choice has to be made within you. Okay, so my way is no better than your way. Uh, my answer is no better answer than your answer. So there's no wrong answers here, okay? If you don't have faith, that's okay. But there is a, a spiritual side of you that has to be satisfied. Doesn't have to be with God. It can be with traditions. It can be with friendships. Uh, that's a little spiritual wellness. So... It doesn't have to be that. You can make your own decision about how you feel about a higher power. That's cool. All right, Paula. Spiritually. Talk to me spiritually. You believe in a higher power. Yes. You pray. Well, I go to church about like once a month. Okay. All right. And are you involved in a community? Do you do anything in church to help? Okay, what did you used to do? Were you an altar boy? No. Okay, I wasn't an altar boy either. I sang in the choir. What did you do? I would help uh, organize, like, uh, no, like, breakfast. Okay, stuff. all right, that's good. You participated. You, you volunteered. That's part of being spiritual. A, a lot of it. A lot of uh, things we do in the church is, is, is volunteering is a part of being spiritual. Okay, so, Bob. What I was going to say about the mental wellness, not the education, okay. what we were talking about earlier, but spiritual wellness, uh, not only attend Mass every Sunday holiday, do prayers at home, watch Mass on television, Okay. try to make it a sacrament of reconciliation ever since we're getting it. Oh. When I do prayers, do prayers for other people that need help. Gotcha. Let's see, see, mm -hmm. spiritually. Mm. Talk very, to me. very important to me. Very important. The higher power. The higher power. Mm -hmm. I read my book, Bible just about every day, sometimes a couple of times a day. Okay. And um, Give me a passage that sticks with yeah, you. I can't recite anything. Uh, me, either. I, I me either. Me either. Uh, me either. I, I'm not that smart. But I do I know. Try not to quote the Bible. I do know, excuse me, that when I. It seems like every time I read. It's something that really helps me out for that day or something uh -huh. that I Absolutely. Need. Absolutely. So that that's important to me. And I wanted to say another thing about the journaling. Mm -hmm. One thing that I do, I use a tape recorder. Okay. Record. I used to write, but it's too much to write, so I do the recordings. Okay. And there's something about listening to your voice. Uh, yes. Um, either going back or right at that moment that it, it it hits home base a little it bit does. more. It does. I'm, the eight dimensions of wellness that we taped over the last ten weeks, mm -hmm. I watch it extensively. Um, I do watch it only to learn uh, a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, only to get a better perspective of how I'm teaching and how the class is, is accepted and responding to it. So, uh, uh, it's something about watching and listening to yourself, uh, especially when it comes to reflection. Okay, friends. Uh, yes, I, I definitely believe in spirituality. Okay. I read uh, Bible. Uh, I've, I've even read the Quran. Okay. Because I was curious about it, you know. I'm not saying that I'm all of a sudden changing and I'm turning into Muslim or right. whatever. But I was curious about knowing about it, so I read some of that. 
Uh, and I go, I kind of like go back and forth sometimes between okay. the two. Okay. And read both and get information and see how uh, how this information from the Bible goes with the information in the Quran. Okay. Like it might be worded different, but it's saying basically the same thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that's unique. That's pretty unique. Yes, John. Can I say something? Yes. It's about what T.C. said about the Bible, and it's about what he said, you can't quote it. Right. I want to know if it's weird with me not being religious. I'm interested in the story in the Bible. I'm not worried about that. I'm not weird. It's not? No. It's the Moses story. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Hey. All right. We always reflect on on something spiritual, even if it's not about God, you still have a reflection on spirituality. Okay. Whether you believe that or not, you do. Okay. Bob? One good thing about John is maybe he doesn't believe in God and there's freedom of religion here in the United States. He said, what God does expect is you show respect towards other people. And All, right. That All right. All right, social wellness. Social wellness is connecting with others in ways that are good for us and build positive relationships. Apollo, I'm going to be all over you on this one. I'm coming for you, Apollo. All right? Benefits of social wellness. Learning from others, having fun and enjoying others, affirmations, support, prevent isolation and promote con uh, connections, love, developing friendships, and intimacy. Okay? For you, social wellness means what? For me, it means definitely getting to know each other. Uh, coming out of my comfort zone, introducing myself to people that I don't, I don't know. Making new friends. Uh, all these things important when it comes to social wellness. Okay? I'm going to go to Apollo first. And I'm going to ask you now that I've given you the goal of becoming more social. What is it meant to you? What is it doing for you? How are you, how are you uh, interpreting the goals that we set for you this uh, semester? Uh, I feel like it's, it gives me more affirmation. Okay. All right. And, so, and it helps support my mental Yeah. Health. Okay. So, what do you hope to obtain socially? If you, if you can get to the goal line, what would the goal line look for, Apollo, when it comes to being social? You'll be able to walk into a club and, and say hello to everybody. You'll be able to go to baseball games and and conversate, what, what, what do you think that the end result of you being social now, what do you think the end result is going to look like? Like having a few friendships. Okay. Are you going to stick with those friendships? Are these going to be friends for life? Are these just going to be people you interact with when you see them? Are you going to take phone numbers and call people and ask them what their favorite color is? Um, what? They enjoy doing. What's their favorite drink? Are you going to become that type of social person? Uh, I guess. Well, I. I'm on my. I guess I can try to get there. Okay. Like, uh, it, like, it's a journey. I I, t I talk on the phone with uh, Chris Fisher. Okay. All right. Why don't you call me? Ah, you can get my number. <laughs> call me. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about sports. We can go to the gym. Okay. I can be your friend. Okay. You want more friends? And you yeah. definitely want a friend like me. <laughs> you definitely want a handsome friend in your corner. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, Social wellness. We're keeping it on the subject because we only have about five minutes. Okay. And we're going to do a weekly goal before we go. So everybody think about what their weekly goal is going to be. Uh, mine would be uh, support also. Okay. All right. Give me an understanding of what you mean by support. Well, uh, 
I do send a check of money to Elders Alumni mm -hmm. Association every year of thirty dollars. Okay. And then the spring around Easter time of the following year, I send a check of fifty dollars to the CMA. Right. Our association and so I always receive a thank you letter back from the principal of Alder High School and a thank you letter back from the Archbishop. Okay. The Archbishop. All right. Miss Cece. I would have to say support because when I have been at my lowest, um, I mean the depths of the low. low uh, trust me, I've been there. I, well, for one thing, I think people use the word friend. It's misused. I agree. That you have many acquaintances, but very few friends. I mean, true friends. Absolutely. And if it hadn't been for them coming and picking me up and, I mean, really telling me, either get dressed or we're going to take you out in your PJs. Okay. Which you don't want to do that. All right. Let me tell you, start a riot. But anyway, um, they forced me to go out, which Good. I needed at that time. Good. So, the, the support. Okay. How about you, Prince? Uh, I think it would be uh, prevent isolation and promote connections. Okay. Because uh, I, I do be pretty much isolated a lot. I do so too. I spend a lot of time um, in my apartment by myself. Um, I've been living at this place for over a year now and people that have been in my apartment I could count on one hand and still have fingers left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's entertain more. Yeah, that, let's have more company. Yeah. Let's work on that. Yeah, that that'll be something to work on because it it, it seems like to me it's kind of hard because some of the people that you know um, you would like to to have their company, but they seem like they never have time to come over. And then of course some of the other people that you know you rather know them from far away. <laughs> you don't want them coming from over. a distance. Yeah, you okay. don't want them where you. In your apartment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we have five and four minutes. We're going to do a quick weekly goal. We're going to go around the room. Okay, I'm going to start. What is my goal for next week? Um, of course, I'm going to try to do the two pounds for the ten weeks uh, that I'm here. That's going to be a weekly goal for me. Uh, losing two pounds a week uh, until the end of the session. So, um, I'm going to try that. That's maybe a little must ask because that's asking 20 pounds in less than, than three months. Uh, that's a lot. But for this semester, I'm going to try to reach the twin, uh, 20 pounds. I'm going to try to reach it. Even if I get to 14, 15 pounds, that's good enough. I'll be satisfied with that. But the goal never stops. And you never stop trying to meet the goal. Okay? So we don't always achieve what we set out to do. But we give it 110% of our effort. That's what I'm looking for out of you. Okay, right quick. Weekly goal. Uh, maybe, maybe I could try to do that, what I was just talking about. Uh, that isolation. Okay. Promote connection. Okay, so invite some people over. Cook something, and I'll come over and I'll eat. Up everything. <laughs> Miss Cece. Um, get back on a, a more balanced diet. Okay, all right. Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. Week we go. Uh, I need to lose weight also. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? As a week ago, I'll try to see if I can lose two pounds. Oh, but that's not telling me what what I'll do to do that. What right. steps are you What are you gonna? What uh, steps are you gonna take? Well, I was mentioned about having more fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. and that. Cut back on carbonated drinks and stuff. Oh, we've been talking about cutting back on carbonation and, and snack bars. <laughs> that that's pretty hard for me to do because I fall for the temptation. Okay, so how are you gonna achieve that two two pound goal? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have to make a goal for that, Bob. We, right. It's not something you can just say. There has to be a goal involved in it. That's okay. Paulo, give me a one-week goal. Uh, make a friend. Make a friend! Whoa-ho! Paulo! <laughs> Very good, Paulo. I'll be his friend. I'll be his friend, too. Larry, give me a one-week goal. 
I call at least four friends of mine that I know. Each okay. Friend, at least once a week. At least once a week. All right. Another goal I want everybody to to do. I want everybody this week or between next week to tell one person that you love them. I knew you were going to say that. Tell one person. I, that's my favorite thing to tell people to do. Tell somebody you love them. That's Part hard. of your support system. I love all my sports. systems. My support system is my family. Mm -hmm. uh, my support system are my friends in Atlanta. My support system are my friends in Cleveland and Akron. And I have a wonderful support system. So I always tell them how much I love and appreciate them. That's something you need to do on a regular basis. Let somebody love you. You love somebody. Yes, like. You mean by like just a Telling them in their faces. In their faces, like, get up in their faces and tell them, I love you. Kiss them if you have to. <laughs> if you yeah, have I to. I was just wondering because I know there's technology like Facebook or something. No. Well, no, if you have to do it on Facebook, that's fine too. But, 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 but I want you to look at somebody. Uh -huh. I want somebody to show you love, not just tell you love. I want somebody to show you love. Okay. Show me love with a hug or with a kiss. Or something. Show me that you love me. And I'm going to tell you that I love you. And I want that to be, in addition to your one-week goal, I want that to be the goal for next week. Okay? So, having said that, we're out. Okay. Now